So I changed the title of the talk and I'm integrating theragnostics into patient care because really that's what we're, we're going to be talking about and how we can integrate this sort of new platform, if you will, uh, into our patient care. These are my disclosures. So, so I, I, I borrowed a quote from uh, Theodore Theldon uh, who wrote on the intimate history of humanity. To, to have a new vision of the future, it's always first necessary to have a new vision of the past. And I think we're entering an area and a time in prostate cancer treatment and imaging similar to when I was a fellow, when uh, I, I showed up in St. Louis and participated in the first laparoscopic nephrectomy. And as we start to move forward, you know, new things are happening at such a quick rate. It's really interesting, but this is a, a new patient paradigm, that a strategy that we're involving therapeutics and diagnostics into one package. And <clears throat> if we look at this, um, it really refers to in nuclear medicine targeting with molecules, either positrons or gamma emitters and therapeutics, and combining these to treat a particular malignancy. So what we're doing is, in some ways, stepping into the future um, with more predictive, translational, personalized medicine going forward. <laughs> if you look at the premise and promise of precision medicine, here's really what we're trying to do is identify a group of patients that we can use a drug that will be not toxic and beneficial. Our current approach has really been trial and error, trying to have one size fit all, but we're really now trying to find the right treatment for the right person for the right time. And we're trying to target therapies for a specific molecular structure and then use that as a potential treatment going forward. So what we're trying to do is cross-pollination between the synergies between pharma and imaging. We're gonna use imaging and therapy together and this can help follow up treatment and happen, you know, treatment that can happen simultaneously. And there's two major components to this, the diagnostic component using a radio tracer or contrast agent, and there's a therapeutic component in which the drug molecule is associated with the carrier system. And we're gonna give you some illustrations of this in just a second. So here we are trying to combine therapy and diagnostics together. We're forming a radio, radio pharmaceutical pair, if you will. You can see we, for therapy, we're gonna use a beta or alpha emitter. For diagnostics, we're gonna use a beta or gamma emitter. We're gonna link this, bind it to a molecule, and then target, and essentially, we're gonna have a target that will not only identify where the disease process is, but try to treat it. And if you look back in the beginning, the beginning of Theranostics actually goes back almost 75 years with uh, iodine-131. And essentially, it was detected by scanners that allowed localization of the disease. And then, with the therapy, we were able to treat these patients that had thyroid cancer. So the major lesson learned, really, is we need to think about changing our practice and changing the way we train to enable greater involvement in clinical decision making with the practice of theragnostics. So prostate cancer really lends itself to this platform quite well. You know, we want to have an accurate selection of patients who will predictably benefit from targeted molecular therapy with a tumor-specific radionuclide, and we start to now have that. With the advent of gallium, lutetium, and actin, uh, actinium, you start to see PSMA has really revolutionized clinical prostate cancer man management. But what's interesting is there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect from the oncologist and the urologist on one hand and the theragnostic nuclear physicians on the other hand, and it's a stark contrast. We don't have these nuclear theragnostic treaters available today. And why is it that the medical oncologists really haven't recognized the role of these individuals? Well, there's a lack of uh, access to these nuclear physicians that have therapy access. There's an inaccessibility and we're not training those types of physicians only now have we started to realize the value of those physicians going forward. I think we all know the comparison between PSA and PSMA, the secretory protein of PSA, it functions to liquefy semen, decreases with androgen deprivation, 
and it's measured as a serum and serum as a cancer marker where PSMA is an integral protein, a membrane protein. It serves several enzymatic functions. It upregulates with androgen deprivation, and it is expressed through medical imaging to correlate with cancer aggressiveness and poor prognosis. So here you see uh, PSMA is a diagnostic. It's a glycoprotein. Many of us know that it's expressed in prostate cancer epithelial cells. It's overexpressed with prostate cancer lesions, lymph node involvement, and there's a further increase in the expression in high-grade metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. And what we're going to try to do is compare it and, and add with a ligand that's available to try to treat individuals. And here you can see are the ligands and the chelator molecules that are available. So the theragnostic really involves the administration of this diagnostic radionuclide agent really to determine where the site of disease is. It examines the molecule's biodistribution and can give us an idea of adverse effects. It aids in determining the optimal therapeutic dose, and we can manage and monitor the patient's response to therapy. So here you can see is just a, a cartoon illustrating the tumor cell, the tumor target. Here you can see is the agent, the, the radioactive isotope, and essentially we're going to target this, and we're going to target it with a radionuclide that's unstable. And in medicine, there's a very small subset that are medically useful. And there are these broad categories of the single photon and positron and electron and the alpha emitters. And you can see these have different roles, both diagnostically and therapeutically going forward. So here are really the pharmaceuticals that we have for prostate cancer. Radium-223 right now is the, the single agent that's approved. You can see that lutetium over here is a beta emitter uh, versus an alpha emitter over here. But as we move forward, this is where the excitement now exists in this field, understanding how these can be uh, put to use both diagnostically and therapeutically. Dan George talked about the lutetium trial, and, and you saw this cartoon earlier, but the goal is to essentially bind on the PSA membrane and then eventually create D uh, DNA damage going forward. And you saw what happens therapeutically with this when you compare the image-based progression-free survival, you can see lutetium over the standard of care has a stronger benefit. And these curves repeat themselves over and over again. When you start to look at overall survival, again, lutetium versus standard of care. And then when you look at symptomatic skeletal events, you can see, again, all three curves have a very definitive distribution and separation that's easily seen across the board. So what are the implications for patient care? Well, I think we're starting to change from conventional medicine to more personalized medicine. It's more patient-centric and it's efficient. We're developing custom-made treatments, looking at the right drug at the right time for the right patient. We can use it to identify patients in whom a drug is unlikely to work, and the treatment will only be offered to those patients in whom there's uh, molecular uptake from the theragnostic uh, and, and diagnostic a nuclei going forward. So for patients, what does this mean? It means that we can effectively treat and have a better disease management plan and perhaps uh, eliminate unnecessary treatments. For physicians, there's enhanced ability to diagnose and stage disease, select optimal therapies, monitor response for disease progression. And for payers, it reduces costs associated with suboptimal diagnostics and treatments, and may even shorten the time needed to diagnose and treat patients effectively. So I think the future is bright and it's exciting. I think for the, this progression and advancement to take place, change is inevitable and sometimes is often difficult for many of us. But I think we need to embrace change. As I look at the future, urologists will need to work even more closely with medical oncologists and nuclear physicians. Practices will start to incorporate this technology more in the upcoming years, and it really can take, theragnostics can take the diagnosis of a patient from the lab into the patient point of care. And we're starting to see this area flourish. We're now even starting to see journals on theragnostics that are starting to appear in the literature. 
So here you can see is, a, is the journal Theragnostics. It publishes innovative research in diagnostics as well as molecular imaging. And more and more of this will start to come forward as we go forward. This is an exciting time. It's an interesting time to be a urologist or an oncologist or a nuclear medicine physician. And I think we need to combine our skills together as we move forward in this new area. Thank you very much.